So today, I'm tearing up my deck so I can show you the difference between working destructively and non-destructively in Photoshop and which one's better. As you just saw, working destructively on a deck can really mess it up beyond repair. And when your wife doesn't know, it can really be destructive to a marriage too. Just like taking an ax to your deck can destroy it beyond repair, working destructively in Photoshop can also mess your photos up beyond repair. Now, if you enjoy the frustrations of always having to undo your Photoshop screw ups, then by all means, have at it. However, if you wanna make Photoshop easier to use and have a lot more fun creating amazing images, then let's chop ourselves into Photoshop so I can show you the difference between working destructively and non-destructively. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and the first part of this process today is to show you how not to work in Photoshop, which is destructively. And I'm gonna use this image here called a close call uh, because Luca is actually throwing and winging that ax, barely misses Nico, barely misses my wife and then shaves off the top of my head. He, can't, he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, and that is actually true. All right, so we're gonna use this image to actually show you what working non-destructively looks like. So I'm gonna take that off here. We're gonna go back to our original edit, which has many, 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 many layers. And I'm gonna go to Nico here. And this is the edited version of Nico, this guy right here in the middle. Let's bring this up closer, uh, a little too close. Let's bring that right there. And then I am going to turn the original edit of Nico off and go back to just Nico without anything on him. All right, so this is Nico without anything on him. And so if we were going to paint on this layer and Nico's rasterized now, we'd grab our brush tool and we'd come over here. I'm just gonna take a copy real quick. So that's Command or Control J so I don't have to uh, try to do a bunch of stuff here to fix that. If I'm going to paint on Nico to get the shaping here on the side of his face like this and on the side of his body, uh, I'm going to have to paint on Nico. So this is working destructively. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my uh, black paint at 100% opacity, 100% flow, and I'm just going to paint on Nico there. All right. Now the problem with that is a whole host of things right now. Since I'm painting on that layer, I really have no flexibility and I can't do anything with it. So if I wanted to bring that opacity down, I'm bringing the opacity down of Nico, which isn't a good solution there. So let's back this up. So I have to undo command or control Z, Z uh, to undo those right there. And so then if I wanted to paint on Nico, I, brought, I have to bring down my opacity of my brush and I have to guess where I want to be here with that opacity. Let's just say, uh, for argument's sake, 28%. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna paint in. Now that's looking a little bit better, but the only problem is we're also painting off the edge of Nico. So wherever you see this edge here, we're painting off the edge. We're painting in essence onto the background as well. So if I come up here to his head and I try to paint here, you see how the background right in here as well gets darker. And so if I control or command Z and back up there so you can't see it, then you see that it gets lighter. All right, let's go back here and let's go to redo that brush. So we'll redo that brush and we'll redo that brush and it brings us back to our original part here where we have our dark on Nico's head and on the side. So that is painting in a destructive way. And what that simply means is I'm painting onto my primary layer, the layer that Nico is, all right? So that is not a very good way to do that. Now, if we go over here to Nico and where he is in our scene, so I can cut him out of this and I put him into our other scene, but if I wanna come in here and I'm gonna cut him out, I, I can do this of one or two ways destructively. So I get my erase tool, so E on your keyboard, and I'm going to bring my uh, opacity all the way up to 100%, my flow all the way up to 100%. And I can come in here 
And I can just start extracting Nico out by erasing the edges here, as you can see here. And if I put a layer behind it and I paint that black, you can see that everywhere that I, uh, I'm on Nico here and I paint that through, I'm erasing it. Now I'm destroying this image as I do this. So I can never recover these pixels that I'm actually erasing unless I want to command or control Z and back all of that up. All right. I can back all the way up to where I was originally. Now Photoshop does have a memory and you can do that to a certain point, but at some point you can't go any further. So if you tried to extract this whole entire image using this technique of erasing the edges, you're going to get to a point where Photoshop won't back up. So if you want to go all the way back to the beginning, you're kind of hosed. That's why you want to take a copy of that uh, before you start erasing it. If you're going to work non-destructively, if you enjoy that frustration of working non-destructively, at least at the very least, copy your image before you start destroying your image. All right. So you can always just delete that one and go back to your original. If, if that's what you want to do. If you like that frustration, I don't. All right. So the second part of this, I'm going to show you how to do this non-destructively. So here we are with our image of Nico. And if I'm going to use my pin tool or if I'm going to use my lasso tool here and lasso something like that and make a selection, then I can also uh, extract Nico from this scene. So I've already made the selection of Nico with my pin tool. We can come up here and I can command or control and hit that layer mask and I can highlight uh, or select Nico specifically from my previous selection. So at this point, what I can do is I can come in here and invert that layer mask right now. If I were to just delete this part of the layer, I would delete Nico out of it. I don't want to delete Nico out of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control command I or shift command I or shift control I that will invert that selection. So then when I delete, that I will delete the part around Nico. Now you are still destroying your primary image because you cannot recover those pixels unless you tell Photoshop, wait a minute, I want to back up and do that again. And you just control or command Z and you get your original image back. Not a recommended way of doing this. Then one more thing here before we move on, I want to show you with blurs. If we were going to blur, create a blur on this image of Nico's arm. Because if you look at the original images, we have a few blurs on here. Uh, bring this up here. And so this is the original image. So we've got some blurs with the hands and things like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just blur this hand out here of Nico. So you can see how we do that if we're working destructively. All right. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take a selection of Nico's arm. Let's go all the way up here. Let's come down along a shirt line there and then make this selection. I'm going to come up here to filter and I'm going to give it a motion blur. All right. Of 119 just so you can see the effect. That is a blurry damn arm. He's just moving it and blurring his arm. All right. So what we've done in essence at this point is we've taken this arm of Nico's original image and we blur blurred it. Now we have changed the pixels of that image and we can never ever recover it again, unless you want to command or control Z. You're like, that's way too much. He's not moving his arm that fast. Not in this situation, maybe in other situations, but not in this, right? Um, so we're going to control Z and we're going to get back to our original image because I want to do a little bit less of a blur. You know, doing it this way is possible and you can do it, but it's super frustrating and it's not very fun. Alrighty, so now that you know the wrong way of editing in Photoshop, the next step is to take a look at what it means to work non-destructively and how that benefits you. And speaking of benefits, I'd like to give a big shout out to my newest Patreons who not only make these tutorials possible, but who are investing in themselves and their craft. Thank you, Deborah Larson Weisheit and Fran for your amazing support. It's because of you 
that I'm able to continue creating my art and helping others bring their visions to life in a uniquely different way. From the videos here on YouTube, to the Facebook live events, to the exclusive Patreon tutorials, and even the composites I personally create, it's because of you that it's all possible. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. With your support, you can also be one of the cool kids on the block like Deborah and Fran. Go to patreon.com forward slash Photillustrator and choose the level of support you'd like to give. From the Photoshop newbie to the Photoshop expert, we have a place for you. But as always, no pressure. All right, so let's get back into Photoshop and do some non-destructive editing. All right, so here we are back in Photoshop and now I'm gonna show you the non-destructive way of editing in Photoshop. And this is way less frustrating and way more fun. And I'm gonna show you why we can do this, all right? So let's start off with this image again. And this time I'm going to work on myself down here, which is Jason. Uh, and we're going to, uh, right here, on this guy right here, this good looking, handsome devil right here. All right, so we're gonna work on that guy a little bit. All right, so uh, taking this away here, you can see that uh, there's, um, I disappear. I just disappear, literally. And go back to the original version of me right there. So uh, basically, if I want to, again, paint on this layer, uh, there's a non-destructive way of doing this. And what I can do here is I can add a layer above it, and then I can clip this layer to the layer down here. And I can simply do that by right-clicking and creating a clipping mask here or I can hold my Alt or Option key, click between, and you will see that that creates a clipping mask right there, all right? So basically, now that I've clipped on this layer here, I've clipped this layer to my original layer, I can do all the painting I want here and only affect this layer, all right? Only this layer. It doesn't fall off the edge like we saw on the destructive way, but I can I can paint all over this image here like this and only affect that layer. That's the great thing about working on different layers that are clipped to your original, preserving the original image, the pixels of the original image. Now, let's say that's too dark. Obviously, I don't want to be a silhouette in this picture. So then I just bring that opacity down and still maintain, again, that original image. That's one way of actually being able to paint on an image in a non-destructive way. So I'm gonna come in here and just show you really quick how I would use this uh, in a practical way. So I just come in here, I know my light source is coming from camera right over here. So I wanna create a shadow on the opposite side. So I just bring my shadow down here like this, and then I might bring uh, a little bit of shadowing over here from my face onto my shoulder. And then I'm gonna come down here uh, maybe give myself a boob right there and then bring down here. I can really emphasize that awesome belly by doing that. <laughs> and then bring that on down there uh, into the leg just like this. Uh, we're going to get a bit under the leg here since that's kind of hiding in the shadow. And then that's going to fall over the foot and down like that. And then I'm not going to worry about anything else. And then I could just blur that layer. So if I can, I can blur that layer without affecting my original uh, image, which is working non-destructively. Again, you're not affecting the original pixels of your image. And so I'm just going to come in here and put a 13 blur on it, whatever. And then I'm going to bring that opacity down just like that. And you can see how that is creating some depth to my character for this image. And that is working in a non-destructive way. And then I come back and I'm like, you know what? I don't like this. I want to change it. I can simply just click off of it or I can delete it entirely. All right. So now let's go over to our image of just me in the scene, just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and make a copy here. And I'm just going to delete that layer mask. All right. So now if we go back to our original here. So this is just me. Uh, I need to extract myself from the background. So in working destructively, I would go in here and I would erase this background like this and destroy those pixels. Well, I can do this in a non-destructive way uh, that would 
preserve all those pixels. So let's just back that up. I want to preserve all those pixels. So I'm just going to, I've already made this selection. So I already take my selection here. You see the marching ants around my image here. That means I have a selection here. So instead of having to invert it and delete it and all that other kind of stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to come down here and I'm going to add a layer mask onto that layer. And what you're going to see happen, boom, it knocks out the back. Now, all those pixels are still there. They're just being masked by Photoshop. Photoshop is saying, or we're telling Photoshop, I don't want to see those pixels. I want to preserve them, but I don't want to see them. All right. So until we do something otherwise, they're still there. And I know that because I can click shift and click on here and turn that layer mask off and all the pixels come back and I can click there. If I click alt or option and click on that layer mask, I can actually see the layer mask here that's happening. All right. And I can invert that and I can see the other way and I can command or control I and invert that back and come back here. All right. So that is a non-destructive way of of extracting an element now let's say at this point i'm happy with this i'm totally cool with this i want to convert this now i want to get rid of those pixels because the more pixels you have to that photoshop has to deal with the more memory it takes on your computer and it slows everything down let's say i'm done i'm good i'm happy i want to get rid of those pixels you can come down here and drag that layer mask to your trash can apply it and now those pixels are gone, all right? They're no longer existing according to Photoshop. And now this image has a lot less um, uh, space or memory requirement than the image that has all those pixels. And then I can convert that to a smart object, just like that. Now let's go over and add a blur to me somewhere, all right? Uh, let's go in here and add a blur into none of these hands are easy, but let's just extract this hand out. So I'm just going to take my lasso tool and just do a rough extraction of it. Just so you can see here, just like that down. Let's go just like that. And I'm bringing that hand. I'm just going boom, boom like that, trying to grab my hair that's being chopped off. Right. So I'm just going to take that extraction and I'm going to command J when I command J now I've made that copy of that hand only that selection only. If I click off of the original image, you can see that hand just floating there. If I click off of the hand, you can see it still exists underneath uh, the copied version of it. So I'm going to take that copied version of it and I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert that into a smart object. All right, so smart objects versus rasterized objects, that's a whole entirely different video, but you're gonna preserve pixels when you convert it into a smart object. So now I can come in here to my filter, I can blur and I can create a motion blur and I can create that 119 uh, pixels motion blur with that. And I'm just gonna click okay, all right? So I'm now looking at that. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. That's way, way too much. So on our uh, destructive method, I'd have to uh, backspace or, or back up to go back to my original and then just keep going back and forth until I found the place that I liked. You don't have to do it working non-destructively. Since I've converted this into a smart object layer, uh, basically I've added a filter onto that layer, a motion blur filter, and I can always bring that back up here and I can just bring that blur down to a, a realistic uh, place, like let's say seven pixels. And so now uh, I've changed that blur really quickly without having to back up, without having to tell Photoshop, give me those pixels back. Now I wanna change it again and keep going back and forth. This is super easy uh, to work non-destructively and make these changes you want with a smart object, all right? So I'm gonna click okay, and there it is. Right now, I just I'm like, OK, I don't like that. I'm going to go back to my original. I can always go back to my original. Either way, non-destructive is a much more uh, dynamic way to work in Photoshop. It's a lot less frustrating. And it'll, it's a much more enjoyable process uh, for you as the artist because it gives you a lot of freedom. 
but that means you're working in a lot of layers, all right? A lot of layers. And there you have it. That's the difference between working destructively versus non-destructively in Photoshop which is really the difference between working dumb blah, 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 versus working smart in Photoshop. So while you can achieve the same results working both destructively and non-destructively, working non-destructively is a lot less frustrating and way more creatively liberating. Now, if you like this video, show the thumbs up some love and subscribe to my channel if you wanna get more videos on photography and compositing. And of course, more videos like next week's videos, where I'm gonna show you the three powerful ways to give your photos more character and depth. I'll see you next week. We are these flies having sex? Mm -hmm. I almost, I mean, I like hit it right where they were. <laughs> and I got it on camera. I didn't mean to dis disrupt their fly sex. Now the world can see how poor